hi guys we i am back tonight with another video so this one is about how to make pearlescent watercolors uh, we are going to go through the main way which is the the way that i like to do it is to use the daniel smith pearl white i know that a lot of other companies uh, have the pearl white too and then we're going to look at the Winsor and newton pearlescent medium So with the like iridescent or pearlescent colors, usually I like to drop a drop of water from my brush on them just to let them soften up uh, before I start using them. So I don't spray my um, palettes because I don't want them to rust. So I just like to just get my brush uh, full of water and I just dab that uh, on the top. It just takes a couple of seconds really just to dab each of the paints that you think might need a little bit of water to reactivate and then they're good to go pretty much. So I noticed when I was what making these swatches I found it a little bit harder to capture on video so that can be a good or bad thing I guess depending if you want a really subtle uh, shimmer then you can use like one of these cotton papers where the watercolors absorbing in like the pearlescent is actually absorbing in, so it's not as shimmery and if you want it more shimmery then you kind of need to find a different paper where it's going to sit on top more so the first thing we're doing here is just using the pearl white and trying to recreate a few of the more expensive colors so this first one we're doing is daniel smith kyanite so i really love the um, all the earth colors from Daniel Smith that are created with so I really love the uh, you know all the earth colors and they've got the bit of shimmer in them so I wanted to try and recreate that I know they're quite expensive so we have the kyanite and then I've just used indigo and pearl white to get a similar effect uh, you know it won't granulate exactly the same but it's quite a good um, match for it and then we have this one is the Sedona and Pearl White so I'm making kind of a, a pearl beige it's just a super pretty one and these are really nice as well for you know just coding your journal pages uh, you know just creating a little bit of ambience on the page to you know write on or draw on another one of my favorites is no surprise is shell pink and pearl white So the next one we're going to look at is the fuchsia which is one of my favorites it has kind of a subtle sheen i really really like it and then we're going to use the daniel smith phthalo green yellow shade to mix with the pearl white to create a similar color basically i just want to show you that if you get the pearl white pretty much any colors that you have you can create uh, some of these really pretty shimmer colors and I know that uh, Turner Artist Watercolor does a pearl white, uh, so it's out of stock at Jerry's. It's a little bit cheaper as well, but I'm not sure. Um, I, I know I've seen it in other brands as well. And I've said this before, I just started with the Artist Loft, Artist Loft ones from Michaels. Just the, you know, that really sort of plastic... Um, with all the different colors that that's just where i started so that's not a bad place to start and there are also like i think the color row colors uh they have a pearl white i think
Okay, so we just watched the Daniel Smith Terravert, did we? And the and then the Dan yeah the Daniel Smith Terravert and White. And now we are using this is one of my favourite ones at the minute. This is the Daniel Smith Hematite with the pearl white. So we're swatching the uh, Daniel Smith Moonstone here so you can kind of see it, the Moonstone's a little bit lighter. You could add a bit more uh, pearl white but I just wanted to show you kind of some different uh, things that are similar to it. So also here is the, this is one of my favourite colours, this is the Wallace and Seymour Shimmer Iron Glimmer. So if you're in Europe it's a bit easier to get, if you're in the UK there is a shop, uh, Select Fine Art Materials, so they have uh, the Wallace and Seymour. So there, I have a video about these. They're a little bit harder to, I wouldn't recommend them for a beginner, but I absolutely love them. So you can see the actual granules in this and it's so pretty and shiny. I did use it in this painting for the shadows and these are the types of, you know, colours that I want to bring and the textures that I want to bring to my paintings. And you can see more of these in the um, how to not overwork your painting. That was a really nice uh, video to create. Okay, so we have done the part that's probably pretty obvious you know getting a pearl white and mixing it with your colors but i got this iridescent medium maybe before i even knew there was a pearl white so it's years and years old um and i found it the other day and i thought this would actually be really this so i've wanted to try something so i thought this would be a good time to try it um so you can see here it's going on a little bit thicker than the watercolor so you can water it down but just straight from the bottle it is a bit thicker and we're going to look at a few different characteristics of it so you can see here i'm just putting some water down and on the left i'm gonna drop in the pearl white and see kind of how it flows in the water and on the right, I'm going to drop in this iridescent medium. So I am using a few different colors here and I'm dropping them in on each side to see how they flow and how they handle in those different mediums. And you can see there that the watercolor has a better dispersion ability in the pearl white. Um, yeah, but, and then I use the, so I use the opera rose and then the fuchsite and the hematite works well in both. So not sure what the binder is in this um, medium. If you're looking to create pearlescent watercolors, I would recommend getting a pearl white before this medium. But I, I'm just going to try this out. I actually do quite like it for what um, you know what we use it for in the video today. So we'll get to that in a minute. But um, it's not necessarily something like unless you wanted to use it that way, I would recommend. I would say if you want to uh, go and, you know, make your watercolors pearl pearlescent, I would get the pearl white. 
but um, I'm going to show you something exciting. So what I want to just show you is, you know, things that you might have on hand, try and think about how to use them in a different way. So like I've had this sitting here and I would never use it for watercolor. So I've tried to think of another way um, to use it with another medium that needs help. <laughs> Okay, so when so I have a video and it's I'll try and link it below and it is about a little swatching a little plate of pastels and we go through and swatch all of the pastels and then we I linked a video there that I was inspired by her pastels and then she put water on top of them to she kind of creates mixed media pieces with the pastels and watercolors and um, all kinds of things so I thought it would be really nice to do a similar thing and try out my pastels that way so that they were on the page and they weren't, um, you know, smudging everywhere. But you could see there that I, I wasn't really satisfied with all of them except the Sennelier ones went really beautifully. So um, I was quite impressed with that and I would like to try more of that. So, and at some point I will do a video with the pastels and then putting a little bit of gum arabic in my uh, cup of water and we'll test that out and see how that goes because I think it will be quite nice and sort of hold the pastels and stop them smudging everywhere. So today we are using this iridescent medium on top of the pastels instead of water. So you can see here that I am going in with the uh, iridescent medium and then I'm getting water as well and putting that over the top. Some of the pastels aren't taking it very well so uh, it's not kind of mixing with them. There's something that's sort of um, not letting them mix but uh, at, by the end it's actually all, I, can, I really can't move it. So I, I'm really happy with the result. And I figured that we had done a pair in, you know, pairs in the shadow video. I kind of like the pair because it's it's sort of a simple shape, but it's also complex. So, um, you know, and it, it allows you to kind of think about the structure and the movement in the pair a little bit and shadow and light. So I think it's just a good one to kind of practice uh, with. And we talked about uh, how not to overwork your painting. And this is one of those times where I probably could have stopped several times along the way, but it's one of those times where I was just allowing myself to try out the new, um, you know, medium, the iridescent medium and the pastels and see how they worked. And so I just kept layering it and kept trying things. So I'm just going to let you watch this and then we'll come back and look at the um, some swatches I did a few years ago of the pearl white mixed with colours. And then uh, we'll try and actually make uh, one of my favourite um, colours which is Phantom Fire from just the pearl white and colours if you know if you don't have those type of colors say you just have a pearl white can you know what kind of colors can you create from it and it's actually really versatile
Okay, so I put one more layer of the uh, acrylic meat, the iridescent medium over it, and I am really happy with the result. I really like the sort of silver halo around the edges. Um, I like the texture in the actual like fruit. And then you can see there though, on the right hand side where it was, it's still, it's very slow drying. But like, look at that texture and the sparkle and like everything that's kind of melding together there to create it's it's really beautiful and um, at the end I'll show you I try to run my finger over it and it's really not moving so here is a book from uh, you know a sketchbook from a few years ago these are some sketches with the pearl white surprisingly even though I am all for shimmer and I you know I have it a, a lot on my channel surprisingly when I swatched these I didn't love as many colors as I thought so um, my two favorites are Sugalite and Pearl White and Potter's Pink and Pearl White I'm also loving Hematite and Pearl White at the minute but uh, yeah I think just because you like sort of something doesn't mean you can't be discerning about you know like I don't just put shimmer everywhere I, I really do have specific reasons why I like it and you know if it enhances that painting or not so anyway let's just look at this so this is the phantom fire and then we are going to and I'll show you kind of one of my favorite mixes with the phantom fire which is so this sorry this is from Rivervale on Etsy and I will link her shop below and um, I love this color I've bought I think three or four of them so um, they're always really nice and let's see so I'm mixing it with the azalea and with the um, Jean Brie number two and that's one of my favorite mixes something like that either the Naples yellow red and and like an opera rose and a pearl white or something like that so we're just going to swatch this and then we are going to just use, instead of the Phantom Fire, we're going to use Pearl White and the Pyrrole Orange, maybe a touch of yellow or some Opera Rose and try and create similar things. Okay, so I just wanted you to have kind of a roundup of video. So I started with the how to mix smoky colors, how to mix dusty colors. We now have the how to make pastels and how to make the pearlescence. And there's one more that I want to do, which is how to mix tertiary colors. So again, pretty simple, but I just want to expand on that and uh, create a video, which I think will be comprehensive and nice about that as well. Anyway, that is all from me for this week. So I will see you guys next week with some dark floral videos. Um, have a great weekend and I will see you then. Bye.